Welcome to Top Shelf. My name is David Pierce, and this week we're talking about this brave new weird world we've somehow found ourselves in. It's about laptops. So the thing is, laptops haven't really changed for like two decades. They've been different and faster and thinner and more powerful, but they haven't really looked any different. But now in 2013, we're in this place where we might have a world where we can do all sorts of different cooler things with laptops. And it all comes from this little Intel chip called Haswell. Let's talk processors. We ask a lot of the processors in our laptops, whether we're playing games, or running Photoshop, or just browsing the web in a dozen different sites while listening to music and chatting with our friends. We wanna do everything, and we wanna do it all at once. And we don't wanna do it while looking for power. That's why a lot of people have turned to tablets and smartphones lately. The ARM chips in those devices last forever. They let us do a lot of things. But Intel's catching up with a new breed of processors and the latest laptops that offer all-day battery life with the same kind of performance you can expect from the last generation and a fruity finish that I think you'll find delightful. The new version of Intel's chips, the Core i5s and i7s you'll probably find inside your laptop are called Haswell. The name doesn't mean anything, but the implications are huge. Intel's promising major performance increases, better graphics performance for gaming and watching movies, and most of all, better battery life. Much, much better battery life. There's a lot of complex engineering behind it, but the short version is that the power system of the chip is now better integrated, which lets Haswell chips ramp up and cool down much more quickly. There are many different Haswell chips, each with a different flavor profile and character that enhances different activities in different ways. There's the ultra low power Y series chip, and then there's the high-end graphics chips, the iris cards, that'll let you play games on an Ultrabook. That's never even been close to possible before. But here's what that all means. Manufacturers can now build thinner laptops and tablets than ever before, because they don't need to put in as much battery to get four hours of battery life. They can also build much more powerful machines than ever before, because the graphics performance is so much better. Or they can do what we're already seeing a lot of, drop the new chips into existing models and just watch battery life shoot through the roof. Which brings us to the new 13-inch MacBook Air. Last year's model was already the best all-around laptop on the market, thanks to good hardware, a great keyboard and trackpad, and solid performance. This year's model changes almost nothing, at least on the outside. There are stereo mics on the side instead of just a single mono mic, but that's literally it. On the inside, though, there's Haswell. We tested a 1.3 gigahertz Core i5 model, which came with a very slight performance decrease over last year's 1.8 gigahertz model, but I didn't really notice the difference. The story here is the battery life. The new Air lasted 13 hours and 29 minutes in our test, more than double last year's model and well above what Intel says Haswell should offer. 13 hours and 29 minutes is enough battery life to completely change things. This is the first laptop we've ever seen that can legitimately claim to last you all day. The new Air is cheaper than last year's model, starting at just $1099, and it's still the best all-around laptop on the market. But it's also the first of a dramatically new breed of computer, and it means that Intel can finally offer the ability for us to do anything we want on our laptops and do it all day long. Sometimes, the best does get better with age. So Apple made the MacBook Air probably the best laptop on the market, better without actually changing much of anything. They just dropped Haswell in and, you know, watched the money pile up. But on the Windows side, manufacturers are trying a lot of different weird things, trying to figure out if there are other ways we might want to use a PC. Lenovo's probably doing the best job. They have the IdeaPad Yoga, which has the weird flipping hinge. And then there's this. This is the ThinkPad Helix. And we first saw it at CES, and this is probably the computer people have been waiting for the longest. It's a tablet, it's a laptop, and there's kind of a lot of people excited about it. So I took it for a spin this week to see if this might be a real competitor to the laptop we've known and loved for so long. We've been waiting for the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix for a long time. After its debut at CES, where the detachable laptop-tablet hybrid was easily one of the best things we saw all week, we waited for the device. Six months later, it's finally here, but it's not quite what we've been waiting for. Basically, the Helix is a tablet, but it's a tablet with a dedicated keyboard dock, which has a big battery and a fan in it. The battery makes it last much longer, and the fan means the Helix can overclock its processor and run even faster when it's docked. The Helix is many things, but it is not well designed. It's full of asymmetry and awkward angles. It's really the furthest thing from a gorgeous unibody device like the Sony Vio Pro or the MacBook Air. The hinge is ugly and exposed as if it's missing its housing. There are screws and buttons and rubber feet and stickers everywhere, none of which lends the impression that this is at all a well-made, sleek, attractive laptop. 
There's an awkward, odd flap on the back that sort of covers all of that, but it looks weird and out of place by itself. It's big, too. The tablet itself weighs 1.8 pounds, and the dock adds two more. It's 8 tenths of an inch thick, too, and even though the matte black carbon fiber body feels rigid, the seams aren't connected well enough. On the plus side, the Helix does get the benefit of Lenovo's expertise with keyboards and trackpads. The curved, concave keys feel great, and the trackpad is smooth and responsive, even if it does have a few of the same quirks as most Windows laptops. There's even a trackpoint nub if you're so inclined, though the buttons for trackpoint users have now been integrated into the trackpad. The display on the Helix is good and bad. The 11.6 inch screen is 1080p, which is great, but having that many pixels on such a small display can actually make it really hard to see and click some text or icons or web pages. It's hard with a mouse and even harder with your finger. There's an integrated digital pen, which helps a lot, and I found myself using it a lot more than I thought, not for drawing really, but just for getting around the operating system and doing some of the small on-screen things that are hard to do with such small targets. But it's not enough, and Microsoft really needs to improve how Windows handles high-res screens. Movies look great in 1080p, as do games, though you really can't play many games thanks to the integrated Intel graphics here. Actually, the biggest problem with the graphics here is that they're already outdated. The Helix runs a mostly clean version of Windows 8 on an Ivy Bridge processor, last year's model, which really doesn't make sense when Intel's new Haswell chips are already out. Performance on the Helix is really good, especially when it's connected to the dock and able to use that fan, but Haswell promises better performance, better graphics, and especially better battery. And the thing is, better battery life might be killer here, because it's already pretty great. We got more than eight hours of battery life with the two parts connected, and more than five hours for the tablet alone. For something this powerful, with this many features, that's pretty great. Here's the thing though, it's not performance that's the problem with the Helix, it's design. Lenovo did indeed make a powerful Windows 8 tablet, which not a lot of companies have done, and it coupled it with a good keyboard and a good trackpad. But in doing all that, Lenovo seems to have forgotten design entirely. I'd much rather have something like the Yoga, which is heavier but much better looking and more cohesive, or even the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, which is just a thin, beautiful, powerful laptop. Design isn't everything, but your $1,679 should buy a lot more care and attention to detail. And even if you think this is the right form factor for Windows 8, I don't personally, but even if you do, this isn't the right way to do it. So joining me now to talk about all this is like all of the laptops in the world and Neil Patel, our it's managing all, editor. It's all the laptops. This is, these are laptops. It's so this is like the beauty, the best part of this was like it took me no time to just like walk in and be like, what are the crazy laptops yeah. I can find? They just, they're all, they're all right here. Well, it's this is, like this is where the industry is. crazy laptops. So I want to start with the MacBook Air. Okay. So what, do you wish Apple had changed things about the MacBook Air? Because they didn't, right? They like, it's the stereo I, mics are cool, but otherwise they didn't change anything. Like, yeah, should I, they have? I think, screen or like I think for most people, this is what, 1099? I think for most yeah. people, this is like the laptop you should buy. And I think what's interesting, if, if you look at this array of machines, <laughs> Apple's like the only one trying to solve the problem of how do we build a better actual laptop. Everyone else seems focused on other problems that sure. nobody else has. So every time I meet with the Nova, they call it the PC Plus era, right? So Apple right. like to call it the, the post-PC era. Mm -hmm. and Lenovo's like, no, we're just going to build a PC well, but I mean, then like, do so crazy what, what, things. What's this, the Helix? It. Yeah. I, mean, I just want to, if you are spending your time, if you're a product manager, right, at, at Lenovo, and you're like, sure. we're going to build a new ThinkPad, and our engineers are spending time building this door, like, can you see this? Look at this. Look at this door. What's happening here? <laughs> it's just, I mean, it door. looks, there's a, there's a very appealing Batmobile aspect right. to this, where, like, when Batman opens the door to his car, like, many flaps right. move. That's cool. But, like, I don't... But you're uh, not that man. Not, I mean, like, Lenovo. this door hides two additional fans. And, like, I get that, like, the processor's overclock, and when you put it in the dock, like, I get it. Sure. I understand why all these decisions were made, but I don't understand how they arrived at, <laughs> we're going to solve this problem. Because I think the problem most people have is my laptop doesn't, the battery doesn't last long right. enough, uh, the trackpad is no good. I mean, you should spend all of your time focusing your engineering area. Uh, if you're a Windows laptop manufacturer, yeah. you should spend right all your time right there yeah. making that good, yeah. not here well, making this crazy. With, with this sort of, Lenovo runs into the same problem, and this is like a big Microsoft problem, is that mm -hmm. like, nobody's made a good trackpad, and I'm inclined to not believe well, that that's know, all their what, fault. Like, Windows needs to get it together. And it's the same with like these high-res screens where everything looks really tiny on such a high-res right. small well, screen. Well, I mean, that's... I that's think, a whole different game, really. Right, I mean, I, there's there's obviously like the interplay of like software and hardware, and you can see that the specs on the Windows side are like kind of outracing the software a yeah. little bit. And my, I, look, Microsoft will get there. I think they know that they need to ship high-res sure. screens, but it's just like the you. I look at this array of products, and it's like all of these companies have done. They're doing crazy things that are like structural about their laptops. They're like, right. how are we going to innovate on form factor? 
and it's weird because I, I I really like that Acer over there. Yeah, this guy. Um, which is the reason I like it is because they spend a lot it's of time so just thin. making a good laptop. Like it's yeah. awesome. I think yeah, it's really nice. Vlad Savov on our team like wrote like a poem about it, like how much he loves it. <laughs> just uh, weeping on Computex, top of it. Right? Yeah. Like it's a great little laptop, and it's thin. And it, like they didn't try to do anything except build a laptop. Like the form factor is true to itself. Like this Dell. The most interesting thing about this Dell is this. Yeah. You're never going to use this computer like right. this, right? But that's what makes it like interesting and like novel and you look at the ads and it's always spinning around the ads. Like, let me just like this let me just show you what I do with this thing every time I every time I get it. Go. I get it. I don't I don't even turn this thing on. I just stand mm -hmm. here and I'm just like, "Oh, right." And um, you just this you just see this. how hard you can hit it and if yeah. it'll go back and forth. Well, I mean, that's great. great. But, like is but, that the problem that people are trying to well, solve? Well, so, like, I, I don't mean, know. that's the thing. It's like this is the question to me. It's like we all of these, most of these mm -hmm. anyway, a couple of these are like regular laptops, but every other one is trying to solve this like I want a laptop and a tablet right. problem, right? And like, I don't know that that's a problem. I don't know anyone who owns a laptop and like an iPad and is right. really pissed that they're not the same thing. Well, like, think, is this? Are they screwing up? Like well, trying so I think to fix in, like, this? Like the pre Haswell era, they couldn't build tablets with Windows, right? Like right. that was hard. They the, the Surface Pro I think is an excellent example of what happens when you try to put full Windows in a tablet. Sure. And Windows RT is apparently just been a non-starter. Right. Most of these companies aren't even building. And it's mostly products. a battery life thing, right? Right. Just like battery life. Just oh, battery goes life to hell and thinness and, like and like whatever. Batteries. So they they Android tablets I think for most of these companies have also been a non-starter. Right. RT tablets have been a non-starter. Sure. So they're like, we need an operating system to build tablet products. Here's full on Windows. To do that, we need a fan. And right. we need an Intel processor. And so we're going to build a laptop, and we'll try to shoehorn it into a tablet <laughs> as well just to get some product onto the market. Right. And I think that has led a lot of these companies to make what are fundamentally mistakes, right? Like all of this, like this, I mean, I, so I, this is like <laughs> fine. But like when you're lap, like what am I doing? Come on. <laughs> I mean, like there are 14 it's like here's a this. tablet, and we're just going to like add pieces to it until it. Right. And I get it. Like this is like if you are a manufacturer and you're looking at the iPad, and you're like, this is what people do with their iPads, and it's like, you know what people hate doing with their iPads? This, like, this is not a, like, I, what do you, what yeah. is this? Right, right. No, like, I mean, it's, yeah. And but I, I think, I, like, I think they'll, they'll, I think the Haswell processors, like now that they're out and they can make reasonable computers with like all thin, right. light, cool, all day battery mm -hmm. life. So the thing is, I feel like this this kind of thing can work. Like it's it feels like a laptop. Like I don't personally when I was using it, I like never used it like a tablet. I just right. used it like a laptop. But it works as a laptop. It has a good keyboard, a good trackpad. It's sturdy. It's humongous. But like this could work. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if anybody wants it necessarily. And this right. is seventeen hundred dollars, and that's ridiculous. Uh, but like I feel like this could work. I guess right. Like it is. I, I think the biggest problem is for all just these manufacturers is that the MacBook, the base model MacBook Air is ten ninety nine, right. and the iPad is five hundred dollars. And you can buy both of those products, and they work together a little bit, <laughs> more right? or less. Like yeah. more or less, but you're in at least a content ecosystem right. together. You, they understand each other. They're they're aware of each other, <laughs> uh, and that that's like a that's expensive. It's two things, but they each serve their use case right. really really well. And I think the, these products like. You're saying you never use this as a tablet, and when you do, pull it out. Like this is a big, heavy tablet, right. and it's 16 by 9, right. which continues to be the wrong aspect ratio for a tablet. But like, it's right for a laptop. Like and this, this is like the thing. There's like these fundamental. <laughs> cool. You know what's cool though is you can see like 400,000 words of text all at once when yeah, you're reading. Yeah, I, I just so that's I, good. Somebody has to know that, like somebody had to have picked this up at some point in their life, and like this. Isn't great. This isn't right. But well, but then their theory is like people just like, want to watch worry. movies, and that's like, what they don't do. Don't worry about that, Steve. Just keep working on that. Hinge. <laughs> yeah, sure. like, I I just feel like they everyone at any laptop company is named Steve. <laughs> by the way, yeah, every all, single they're one. all named Steve. <laughs> I just feel like like just in general, you, these are this is solving problems that don't exist. Okay. Right. And but I, they have to they have to try. Right? right. So that's the question is like where where do we go? So like Haswell's cool because it takes what we already have. And makes it into like what we've always wanted it to be, mm -hmm. right? Like this all-day battery life thing Intel's been quoting for right. like three days or for three years rather yeah. is like actually real now. Like yeah. our laptops, like twelve hours is all day. I don't need more than twelve hours. Uh, you know what's interesting? Uh, I did the the piece on Haswell the Air. Yeah. In that, there's the time lapse. Mm -hmm. uh, the MacBook Air actually lasted longer than the battery and the camera that was taking the time lapse. That's ridiculous. So the Air, because it was just loading one page, it wasn't yeah. doing like anything strenuous. It actually lasted for 17 hours. That's crazy. And the camera went like died at like yeah. 12. I mean, that's the thing. So it's like that's you know, if battery life at, at 12 hours, battery life is like not right. the concern anymore. Like right. if you're using your laptop for more than 12 hours at a time, like 
think, calm down. Rethink things a little Stop bit. Stop working maybe. on that hinge. Right, Steve. exactly. <laughs> Take a break. Come on, Steve. Just, <laughs> just close it. Just go see your family. Yeah. Uh, but so, like, is there, do we just have to sort of, if I'm Lenovo, right, yeah. do I just give up and, like, keep no. making the same thing no, that I've been making know, for I 20 think, years? Look, I, I think Microsoft is, they're, they've picked a direction with Windows 8. I yeah. think they're, for better or worse, they're leading the charge in touchscreen laptops. Like, build touchscreen laptops. Like, I, that's cool, but don't, don't try to figure out what to do with this. Like, right. don't have this problem. Like, this is fundamentally a problem with all of these. Like, at some point, you end up dealing with this. Like, <laughs> right. just down the line, all of these detachable keyboards. And it's like, what are you going to do with this? Right. Are you just going to leave it? Like, you have to look at this. Like, just you made this object. Yeah. And this object might enhance, like, this computer. But fundamentally, it's like, this is going to end up in a yard sale some someday. <laughs> and like fourteen year old me is going to come right. staggering along, and be like, "What is this?" No, what's going to happen is you're, it's it's going to break. Like I kept right. putting this thing in my backpack, and this like weird little flap would just catch on stuff. Right. And and I, I, I don't I, I don't mean to just hate on on this one. Like I'm I'm just saying like I think each of these I think what we've discovered after all this exciting with like, form factor innovation innovation yeah is that these form factors need to be true to themselves. Okay. And the thing that these manufacturers can do. Is directly compete with the MacBook Air, right. right? Like they, this is. I think we've agreed that in terms of general purpose laptop for like regular people, like that's pretty much the best you can get right now. Sure. And they need to go after that idea, yeah. which is it lasts all day, it has a reasonable amount of uh, price and performance, or a reasonable mix of price and performance. Um, it had, the trackpad is good. <laughs> the screen is decent. I mean, it's not. Yeah. Some of these, the Vio right there has a higher resolution screen. Like, you need to go after this. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go after some, a market that is kind of nascent and doesn't exist. Right. Because that market is being, you're being eaten alive by the iPad there. Yeah. Like, no, I mean, it seems like we've sort of, that, like, that market has been ceded to Apple. Like, they're yeah. going to win at tablets, and that's okay. And but, nobody wants to spend $1,700 on a thing that they think is a tablet, or even $1,000. Like, right. if something is primarily a tablet, I feel like you can't charge what people are charging for this. But I think the one exception uh, is, the is, is the yoga. And this, like... I've, t I've talked about this way too much and I keep coming back to it, but it's like, I really feel like they kind of nailed this because it's like, yeah. you could just use it like a regular laptop and you'd never know. And like the trackpad is as good as it can be on Windows and there's right. a touch screen and you know, it's thin and pretty light. No, I, I have the 11 inch one upstairs and it's yeah. like my favorite 11 inch computer I've ever used. Um, but then it also, if you like really want to do crazy right. stuff, you can do this and it, you know, is a half decent tablet. It's a little weird because it has this, but That's like when I was reviewing the thing, I wound up like putting it down sort of like so this and just cool. watching movies a lot. I, I think this is this is this is what you get, right? And yeah. it's almost like a it's almost like a tell. Like here's how you know if one of these products is going to be successful, these hybrid products. Like can you see mechanical stuff? Right? Like <laughs> yes you can. Yeah. With here's a surface. Like yes right. you can. Like right. there's mechanical stuff involved. Like there's the the Vio Duo, which is like just a this thing like is a festival for the eyes in terms of like hinges and stuff. It's levers, really right? pretty though. And it does this it's thing. Really, I've like, spent like hours just trying to see if but it, it just. The second you see this, I'm telling you, yeah. the second you see this on a computer and like look at the other side, like you can see the ribbon cable. Like the second you're aware of the ribbon cable, like your product is a fail. And like <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I love Sony. I think they're, it's cool that they tried, yeah. but this is never going to work. The, the reason this is successful is because all of the mechanical stuff that makes this what it is is totally integrated, yeah. right? So like that's, that's it. And it's like, okay, this makes sense. Like, I understand a laptop. I understand how to open it. I'm just going to keep opening it right. until it closes again. <laughs> and now it's now it is, is doing this thing. And I think this is intuitive and makes sense to consumers. Where all of this is just complexity that right. nobody's asking. For. But isn't that the problem? Like, aren't we in this place where we need to be, you know, moving forward? And like, you know, not to keep using Apple as like the well, bastion of everything I, great, I, but like I, Apple came I out don't with the think iPhone. Apple's, like, no, I, forward the, the iPhone there. is like my example of that, where they came out with this thing and they were like, "This is different. We promise it's better." We think you're really gonna like it, and like, maybe there's there's something to that. Like, right. we've been in this same place where, like, you know, if I held this up next to you know a Lenovo laptop from 20 years ago, you mm -hmm. know, they were both Lenovo laptops, and like, right. that's good on one hand, but really bad on another, because it's like a lot of health has changed in 20 <laughs> years. Like, why hasn't this? But, and I mean, that hasn't changed. Did we just in three years? Sure, but like, I guess maybe did we just nail this three years ago? I guess touchscreen is a big one. Things like at higher res. And right. then I guess just like thinner and we'll eventually just carry it around and it'll be this big and that'll be cool. Well, you know, the thing with laptops, and this is just my, my theory, is that I think laptops, they're essentially like the perfect expression of the TI-99 that I had <laughs> when I was like eight. And that's what computers look like and like, yeah. that's what they've become. But those computers appeal to a really narrow 
subset of people. Like, my parents don't want to use a laptop. They've never right. asked me for a laptop. They have an iMac and an iPad. Yep. They stopped using the yep. iMac. They only use the iPad. My niece and nephew have no interest in laptops. Like, they just want to use the iPad. Um, I, I think this is like, there's like this narrow window of people who grew up with computers that look like this, mm -hmm. and they this is the ultimate, like, we've hit that. Like, this is what the computers right. that look like that are going to look like. There are really good options now. The second you try to deviate from that, like build hinges and ribbon cables, like you start building something else that like isn't that, <laughs> right? And you're, right. you're trying to shoehorn, like yeah. we, fine, we get it. Like these have evolved to their final condition, right? The next step is all these touch devices. And right. those touch devices need to be true to themselves. So I think, yes, these will inherit qualities of those devices, mm -hmm. but they, I don't know that any of this form factor innovation has led us anywhere meaningful. And like the Surface Pro, I think is, it's about as good an example of like, let's build a tablet that's a keyboard and build right. a really weird laptop and it has this hinge and a kickstand. And it's like, you look at it and you're like, why didn't you just build a laptop? Right, but maybe that's where we're going, right? Is that like, it, you know, people will have like a desktop and a tablet and a tablet becomes the portable thing. And maybe this is like, we're slowly taking like awkward baby steps toward that. Oh, you think where eventually you they'll, think desktop you know, computers are coming back? I mean, I think if, if tablets become what everybody thinks they're gonna become, which is mm -hmm. like the future of how we compute on the move, yeah. then yeah, I think desktops are coming back. I think in like, they'll be thinner and cheaper and yeah. it'll basically be like your TV and your computer sitting on your desk all at once. Uh, and that'll be where the, you like get real work done because nobody's ever gonna, you know, with the on-screen keyboard of the iPad, no matter how good it gets, you're never gonna wanna like, really like sit no, down and do business on your iPad, but, that's but you how, can. But that's how you get to here. Like, right. you know, like poor Seuss. Well, that's what I mean, like, maybe they, these like, are just like the ugly baby steps toward that. <laughs> sure and you, like, the really, 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 really ugly baby. on the road to perfection. <laughs> right. I, I just think like the, the whole, the, this industry is like they're, these are attempts to compete with the iPad and not attempts to compete with the MacBook Air. Right. And in doing so. But they cost more than they, the MacBook Air. They co cost more than the MacBook yeah. Air. And in, do, in, in, in failing to recognize where they need to compete, they all miss the mark wildly in, in different, all different ways, except for, except for that one, except for the S7 over there, which literally is like, we should compete with the MacBook Air, and they made a really good computer. They did, except that it's like, and it, it has it has surround sound on the bottom. We were I talking do about like this earlier. It has, yeah. Like, yeah, it has like five speakers. And it says on professionally the tuned on the inside, just in case you didn't know how how good it was. <laughs> but no, I agree. I think this is like Toshiba says amateur tuned. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, yeah, I mean it's you know because Sony, Sony was like we're going to compete with the MacBook Air and like right. Sony too they made if you were engineering a, a hinge for your display that has to support the full weight of the keyboard off the ground, like just stop. <laughs> just think about what you're doing. Like, Fair. how will this keyboard be more rigid? If it's sitting on the table yeah. or if it's, or if it's an not. inch off the ground? Like, <laughs> right. you should understand that it'll bend in the middle. And like, just stuff like that. It's like, what do people want? They want they want to spend over a thousand dollars on these on the people who spend over a thousand dollars. What do they want? They just want them to feel sturdy. Yeah. And if your thing is bending in the middle, it doesn't matter if it's made of yeah. carbon fiber. Hypothetically and speaking, yeah, of course. Yeah. Thing is just like, <laughs> the thing flexes away when you type on it. And yeah. It doesn't matter if that means over the long run it will be more durable. Like the the, the which is the argument that I've been hearing from all the Windows people. Like, it's more durable because it's flexible, which means it like the, I don't care. It feels like junk. And like sure. that, I think that is like just it's so simple. Like compete with that. Don't compete with the iPad. Yeah. And we'll get we'll get there. I promise you, it'll be okay. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Or, well, or thank you this. so much. Go go tell I'm Steve at Lenovo that he needs to like look, change Steve. everything. Well, look, and, I'm taking you know, this. Shut his laptop I'm down. Taking, and go I'm see taking his this Batwing computer and I'm leaving. <laughs> Oh, the fans are spinning. Yeah, you know, it happens. And that, everyone, is our show. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Neelai Patel and all these weird laptops for being here. Neelai, stop breaking my computers, please. I, mean, I have to send these back. It's, I'm gonna get, you're going to get me in trouble. This anyway, one has a slot thank you tank, for being here. And we'll be back end. with lots more next week. We have coverage of all these laptops, including the full review of the ThinkPad Helix at TheVerge.com. And we will see you next week.